In this video we will go through how the sample inference tool works in Chipster and how the algorithm infers the amplicon sequence variants, so-called ASVs, by denoising the reads. So in this video you will learn the steps how the ASVs are inferred in a two-step process, where at first the error model is learned and then using the error model and abundance informations the ASVs are inferred from the samples. Then we will go through the parameter options and how those affect the results. And finally, what are the resulting output files. And we will discuss some features of the algorithm in a bit more detail. So, the sample inference tool in Chipster is a two-step process which is based on the learn errors and data functions of data2 package. And this tool is used to infer the amplicon sequence variants, so-called ASVs, by first finding out the sequence errors to an error rate matrix, and then using that information and the abundance data to identify the real biological sequences, called ASVs. And before continuing with the algorithm, I could note here that you need to filter and trim your sequences before, because the clean data gives better results and runs much more efficiently. And especially be sure that your reads do not contain ambiguous bases or reads which are too short, because otherwise the algorithm doesn't work. And as input, you need to give one DAR package containing all the filtered FASTQ files like the filtered fastq's tar, tar package created by the filter and trim reads tool. And in addition, you need to specify if the reads are paired end or single end, or if they were produced with ion torrent. And for ion torrent data, a few small par parameter changes are recommended, which I will tell a bit more precise later on. And if you have paired end data, forward and reverse files are processed independently. And at this point I could note that in order you want to get more information, please check the original publications, which you can fi find here, which were made by the developers of the data workflow, to find out the exact function of the algorithms. So, at first, we run the learn errors function to obtain an error rate matrix to be given as input to the denoising data function. And the most common sequencing errors are substitutions, especially in Illumina data. And therefore, the learn errors function tries to infer error rates for all possible transition and transversion point mutations. So in short, the learn errors function will find the error rate model by alternating estimation of the error rates and the inference of sample composition until they both converge. So it starts with the most abundant sequence and then compares the other sequences to that. And it uses at most this amount of nucleotides for the estimation or less if you don't have that many. And then it uses a parametric error estimation function of lowest bit to fit an estimation of the observed error rates. And I could note here that every amplicon dataset has a different set of error rates. So here you can see a visualization how the learn errors algorithm works and how the matrix of transition probabilities is created. So here it takes the most abundant unique sequence, which had here 10,000 reads, like you can see here, and uses it as the center of the reads. And then using pairwise alignment between the uni other unique reads, it finds the different errors for each transition and transversion mutations and calculates the error rates. And like that, it finds and obtains an error rate matrix of each transition for each consensus quality score. So if you set the plot error rates parameter to be yes, 
you will get an output file which looks like this one here. So the error rate matrix for each 16 different tra transitions of the four nucleotides as a function of the quality score here are plotted. So if you have paid and reads, then this 16 subplot image is created for forward and reverse reads. So here on the plots, the black points, you can see, are the observed error rates. Then the black line is the estimated error rates after conversions, and the red line is just for making it easier to see the expected error rates based on the defi definition of quality scores. So visualizing the estimated error rates is a good sanity check that everything is going to this point OK. So based on the plots, you should check at least two things. At first, does the model, so the black line here, reasonably fit the observations, so the black points? Which, for example, in this case, looks quite OK. And the second thing to note is just that do the error rates mostly decrease with quality score, like this. So like you can see here in most of the cases, that's the case and everything looks fine, so we can continue. Okay, now we are ready for the data or so-called divisive amplicon denoising algorithm, which is the core denoising algorithm to infer ASVs using the error rate matrix and abundance data. So like the name says, it's a divisive clustering algorithm. So it assigns all the unique ASVs to one cluster and then subdivides the sequences to new clusters until fitting the error, error model. So what actually happens there? So at first, the reads are replicated and sorted by the abundance. Then the most abundant unique sequence is used as the center of the new cluster. And then it calculates p-values for other unique sequences inside the cluster, comparing to the center sequence based on the abundance and the quality profile of the other unique sequence. And then it compares the calculated p-value to the previously set omega a parameter to decide whether the read was too abundant to be caused by sequencing errors. And then the sequence with the lowest p-value smaller than the omega a value is used as the center of the new cluster. But no worries, I will show in next slide a more or better visualization of the algorithm, how it works. Uh, but the data algorithm is a balance between sensitivity, sensitivity and specificity. So it tries to infer as many real ASVs as possible, but not to infer false positives. So infer ASVs, which are actually not ASV. So here in this slide, you can find a visualization how the data function works. So we here we have in this, see, this circle, we have all the sequences. And at first, those are de replicated. So you can see here that each unique sequence, like this one, and the abundance, how many times it appeared. Then those unique reads with the abundance data are sent to the algorithm. So it takes the most abundant sequence, once again, as the center, and compares the other ones to that based on the error model and how many times it appeared, so the abundance. Then those sequences, which were too different, are put to a new cluster as the sequence with the lowest p-value and thus most likely with highest abundance as the center of it. And then that continues and continues until no more new sequences can be put to a new cluster. And just to note here that singletons can not form a new cluster, or in other words, because singletons cannot be the center of a new cluster. And yeah, like the center of the each cluster is the ASV. So then you have one parameter option you can decide, which is called type of pooling in Zipster. So by default, it is set to independent, which means that the ASVs are inferred from each sample individually. And it is the most 
computationally easiest way, but it is often the best and good enough choice. And then the other option is to use pseudo pooling, the second one here, which can increase sensitivity. So to find more rare variants. And it runs the independent processing twice. So the first run is the same, but on the second time it uses the ASVs found in the first run as prior information. So it uses the information that, for example, in the first run, the ASB1 was found in the first sample, but not in the second. So then in the second run, when knowing that ASB1 is a true biological sequence, that ASB1 might be found from the sec second sample as well. And it, in the first run it might be have had a few low abundance, so it was considered as error. So in other words, a few more ASVs can be found with the pseudo pooling in each sample, but the total amount of different unique ASVs doesn't change. And all the ASVs found at least from two samples in the first run are used as priors in the second run. And the best choice here depends on the data and what you are studying. So for ion torrent data, like I told earlier, a few parameter changes for the data function are recommended. So if you have ion torrent data, please select the ion torrent parameter in the parameters tab in Chipster. And those different parameter values are recommended because sequences produced with ion torrent have a slightly different error profile. Ion torrent makes normally slightly more indel errors as substitution errors are more common for Illumina data. And those indel errors occur especially in the homopolymer regions of ion torrent data. So at first, to deal with the problem, the value of the band size parameter here should be changed to 32 instead of 16 for ion torrent data. That means that the maximum number of gaps of one sequence relative to the other one in needleman wunsch alignment is increased to 32, because those gaps are more common with ion torrent data. And then the other recommended parameter change is to set the homopolymer gap penalty parameter for needleman wunsch alignment to min minus 1. And normally gaps in homopolymer regions are treated as normal gaps with a penalty of minus 8. So it means that for ion torrent data, homopolymer gaps should not be penalized that heavily because those are much more common in ion torrent data. So finally, it's time to go through the result resulting output files. So the data algorithm creates data class objects, and those are saved as RDA files. So in other words, the data class objects of forward and reverse files are saved as own files. And then in addition, one summary file is created. The summary file has all relevant information on the learn errors and data functions. So that file is listed the key parameters used, number of unique sequences in each file, and then finally, like you can see down here in this image, how many ASVs were inferred from each file. 